you've been given an equation that tells you about the velocity squared of some particular particle in terms of displacement. Now just um, have a look at this last line that we've written here. What that essentially means is if you get some expression for velocity squared in terms of displacement, and it's this, it's a quadratic, but it's concave down as it were, right? You've got a negative leading coefficient. In this case, it's negative two. Even though it doesn't look anything like a trigonometric function or like our original differential equation that we started with, minus n squared x minus c. When you see this, what we've just shown is that that's simple harmonic motion. That's a bit of an indicator for us, okay? What we want to do is two things. Number one, we want to show that it is simple harmonic motion. We want to, like, how can we tell? That's actually the easy part. And then secondly, once we get past that, we want to know these particular qualities of the simple harmonic motion. <laughs> Excuse me. Period, center of motion, range, and amplitude. Though you'll see range and amplitude are really kind of two halves of the same thing. Okay, so this is the situation. Let me jot down what we're having a look at here. Uh, our v squared, this is our example. What's it equal to? It's nine, negative 2x squared. What's the rest of it? I just can't read it from here. Thank you. Okay, so first step, I want to prove that this is simple harmonic motion. Now, I've kind of got two uh, tools in my toolbox for working out whether something is simple harmonic motion or not. I've got all of those time equations. Uh, a sine nt plus alpha plus a constant, or a cos nt plus alpha, etc. Or I've got that other tool, the one that we started with today, not the time equations, but the this, this displacement, this differential equation, right? In this situation, which one is going to be more useful to me? It's, it's, it's going to be this uh, differential equation, isn't it? Because there's no time to be seen here, right? So therefore, differentiating with respect to time, not very useful. I need to differentiate with respect to x. In order to get like velocity, sorry, acceleration in here somewhere, I need a half v squared, don't I? I don't have a half v squared at the moment. That's no problem. I'll just multiply everything through by a half. And now you're seeing why all of those coefficients were even. It was just to make things easy for us, okay? So far, so good. I've got a half v squared now. What am I going to do with that? Like, under any motion situation, I can differentiate that with respect to x. I mean, it all is in terms of x, right? So let's go ahead and do that. I've got my d half v squared on dx on the left-hand side. What do you get on the right? It's a polynomial, guys. You can do it. Yeah, you're like, I'm an extension 2, I question everything now, right? It's a minus 2x plus 4, good. Okay, where can I take this? What is the left-hand side equal to? Like, by definition, this is acceleration, x double dot. And then what I want on the right-hand side is something of that format, okay? What am I going to factorize out? Uh, 2, I reckon I'm going to go better than 2. I'm going to go minus 2, right? Minus 2 at the front. And that leaves me with x minus 2 because of that double negative there, right? So number one, have I proven that it is simple harmonic motion? Tick. This is the differential equation that I wanted. That's the first thing. And now I need to try and work out all the rest of the pieces, which are not too arduous. Right off of this equation, I can read off two of the four things they're asking me for. What are the two things that are just like on the face of it? Center of motion, which part is the center of motion? It's the two, right? Here is the center. I'm going to say the center is x equals two. Emmanuel? Have we, have we proven that it is a Oh, sure. I really at this point should say, therefore, uh, is it a particle, is it an object? What is it? It's a particle. Particle is in simple harmonic motion. Thank you, Emmanuel, for being diligent. There we go. Uh, because it satisfies the differential equation that is the definition of simple harmonic motion. Uh, OK, we were part of the way through. We got the center. What was the other thing that you can tell me straight off of the differential equation? It's the period. It just takes a, hold on, period, yes. It takes a, a teeny bit of a step, but we can do it, right? The period comes from, if I come back over here, it comes from n, right? It's going to be 2 pi on n. So in this case, just be careful, right? What is the actual n in this equation? It's root 2 because that's a minus n squared right there, okay? So therefore, since n equals the square root of 2, 
that implies that the period will be 2 pi on that. 2 pi on root 2. Yes? 2 divided by root 2, last I checked was root 2, because that's what root 2 means. So therefore I have root 2 pi. Do I have any units? I don't think so. Usually it's seconds, but you get the idea. I'll just leave that as time units there. I've got the center. I've got the period. At this next moment, you have to think for a second. I am now looking for range and amplitude. Range and amplitude. Hmm. I won't call on you, but I'm just curious to know, how many people immediately already know what to do to work out range or amplitude? Hands up. I just want to get a rough indication. Two, three, four. Okay, all right, hands down, thank you. I'm glad you know, but for the rest of you, call yourself back. We're sort of in a lucky position that we've got all of our working from today still on the board. I can pull the same trick that I did back over here to work out that constant of integration. I can pull the same trick that I did here to work out where my range is. I even used the, well, actually no, I used the wrong word. I said domain, but you get the idea because I was thinking about x's, right? The range of motion is how far can you go, right? What are the limits of your motion? <clears throat> we have the limits of motion on the board. We use them to evaluate this constant of integration, right? What are the limits of motion? It's, it's your center plus or minus your amplitude. And that's one of the things that we're being asked for, right? The reason why this is helpful is because I know at those extremes of motion, what the velocity is. And I have a velocity equation right here. Do you see that? So if I can substitute in the velocity being zero, bam, this thing cancels. And then I can solve this to find, well, where are those extremes of motion? Once you've got that, you kind of have range and amplitude in one fell swoop. So can we do that? I think I don't need this all. So I'm going to go down to about there. I'll leave this because this is the fact we're about to use. <coughs> And because I'm introducing a new line of argument, zoop, I want to say what I'm doing. So at the extremes of motion, or at the extremities, velocity equals zero. Yes? So I'm going to go right back to the original question, marker, and I'm going to say, well, therefore I can substitute into that first equation. Zero squared equals negative two x squared plus eight x plus 10. Of course, we know we can divide through by this. We divided through by 2 last time, but I can be even lazier. Divide through by negative 2, and that gives me a really delightfully simple quadratic. Did I do it right? Did I divide through correctly? Yeah, I'm just watching for the negatives there. Can you help me factorize? x minus 5 and x plus 1. x minus 5 and x plus 1. x plus 1? Is that right? Multiplies to that, adds to that, looks good to me. So then x gives me two values. Um, negative 2 plus minus 3. Say it again. Negative 2 plus minus 3. Negative 2 plus minus 3. So you've already gone to working out your center and your amplitude. I'm just going to write down my solutions first. Okay. And I know, firstly, there's my range, right? There's the low, or the most negative I can get in the negative direction. There's the most positive. But that's really saying, well, because I already know right over here what my center of motion is, right? There's the center, and how far do I go to get to either of those? I go three units. Sorry, Zhao, as is often the case, you're like three steps ahead of me, okay? So I've got my center of motion from that. I can read off amplitude, and this line right here is already the range, okay? Range here, amplitude here. How do you feel about that? Again. I factorized out the minus 2 and I completed the square. Yep. I didn't use v is equal to 0. Sure. I completed the square. Oh, sorry. So you're back on sort of this, or like this line? This line. Well, you need a minus sign, don't you? Yeah. yeah. A minus sign here, so everything goes like we had over there. Yep. yep. And I got it into the form of n squared a squared minus x minus mm -hmm. 2. Mm -hmm. So if I completed the yeah, excellent. Okay, so just in case you're not following, right? Essentially, and gets pulled this trick, right? Which is clever because this trick has, or rather this line, this e equation, has an A in it, which is kind of the thing that I'm looking for, right? This in some ways is a rather indirect way of going about it because you find range and amplitude comes from the right. 
this is actually sort of in some ways a more direct way to get to A because A is in that equation, right? And I guess you got 9 here, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you, that's what you have to add to complete uh, that square. That one there. Yep. Harder than square. Yeah, that's right. Um, thankfully, we all get the same answer. So, which we shouldn't be surprised by because these are all the same equations. Does that make sense? You happy? So, let me pause there and just make sure we know what we're doing, okay? In order to use uh, equations of, in order to work with equations of this form, we just need to remember we've got the definition for simple harmonic motion from the differential equation, and then, uh, no, I rubbed it off this time. Uh, no, here it is. Our generally, in, for all motion, not even not simple harmonic, this is always true, so we can use that to number one search for simple harmonic motion, and then integrate up and get expressions like we saw here, which can work, let you work out amplitude. 